Hi, I'm Stephen Han from Archery Supplies. This is a Gearhead Dis Dissipator um, 20. So one of my customers purchased this bow from America. He said it cost him about $1,500 Australian landed. I checked the website before doing the review. It cost $729 US, I think. Um, there was no specs on the website about, so I really couldn't find out much before doing the review about this bow. But Gearhead make, make bows of different lengths, and a number of my viewers, or some of my viewers, shoot Gearhead, and they swear by it. They swear these are the greatest bows ever produced, and they're better than other bows I've reviewed. Now, I haven't actually shot one. So, first off, I have never shot this bow before. I've never tested this bow before. I haven't shot an arrow out of it. One of my customers has shot an arrow out of it, and the, per the original purchaser of this bow never shot the bow. So he brought the bow in America and never shot an arrow from it. Um, now I would say the customer who shot this in the shop, the peep sight came out of it um, when he shot it. Now I'm going to say what scares me about this bow first off is it's so short axle axle. It's going to create a very acute angle and you run the risk with an acute angle of talking the bow and derailing the bow. So for me it's a bit scary, it's a bit like shooting a crossbow, it's like it doesn't feel comfortable for me. I'm saying that without having shooting the bow, maybe I'll shoot and I'll love it, but it's a bit scary. Now, there is no draw length adjustment on here. Um, the stop position can change, so I'm guessing it can change the way it feels at the back end valley. This draw stop will here, will touch the limb when you pull it back. Um, so I'm guessing you'll be able to change this. The sides are machined. You can change the position of the handle backwards and forwards a little bit and you can change the draw stop backwards and forwards. Um, look, it's a highly made qual quality product. You can tell it from the way it's built. Um, there's Chinese knockoffs of this product. Um, this is a quality product. I'm going to say the Chinese ones are not as good um, and they're not like they're in different ballpark different price point too like two hundred dollars versus you know fifteen hundred um but you know like this looks like a nice thing what's different about gearhead to start with is the sights on backwards now putting the sight on backwards instead of putting out the front if you put the sign on further away the more you make the adjustment on the site it has a less impact so out here is like micro adjustment back here makes some huge adjustment so you get more distance so you can shoot further distance putting behind the sight window we used to do this in the olden days with a recurve um, bow to shoot long distance but now we put the sights at the front and even with recurves today we still move the sight in to shoot long distance so we can shoot further so generally out the front more micro um, it shows more shows you shaking more so I should see less movement here the grip is grip feels a bit different. Um, the shape of it and the curve of it, it's more pistol-like. Um, it's not a traditional compound bow, which is more down. It's very, very different. Um, now, the cams itself. Looking at the back cam here, it looks like the cam is actually off an angle. If you put the an arrow down, you can see the cam is tilting that way. Um, less so on the bottom cam. But you can see it's a fraction. Now to fix that you could shim the cam. Um, it's bending this way so there's more pressure on this side so you shim the cam that way. There are some washers there to do that. Um, I'm not doing that, I'm just doing a review. So now if you're a beginner archer, I don't recommend this bow. I haven't shot the bow, I haven't done anything, right? So I just don't like short axle axle bows for beginners. This bow is a very specific purpose bow. So who's going to want a short bow like this? Somebody who's going to shoot from car windows, obviously. Um, tree stands. Um, people shoot inside tents, like in blinds, who you know, are looking for a um, short um, height restrictions. People are crawling through the bush. Someone who's just looking for a compact bow. Someone shooting short distance. So let's try the draw, draw cycle out. It uh, it does scare me a bit. Oh, the other thing I noticed about this bow, the string is extremely thin. Like, what's the like? Generally, strings are a standard size of number number of strands to a string. 
the groove here is quite narrow so you'll see with the Matthews bows they have quite big um, groove tracks just try and limit the de derailing this is quite narrow here um, now I'm going to also say gearhead make a pro version of this which I think has got adjustable draw length um, so we're going to try the we're going to try the draw cycle try shooting through a chronograph so let's try this out uh, Oh, so the bow itself weighs 4.4 ounces, uh, pounds, sorry, ounces, pounds. So it feels quite light when you hold it out here, but when just dead weight, it feels a bit, feels it feels heavier than you think for a bow this size. But it does have the two strips of metal. Um, Yeah, I have this bow set on under 60 pounds, a little bit under 60. It's a 70 pound bow. I've wound it back, I think, four turns to get it to 60 pounds. The first bit feels a bit soft and it feels like it's building. So there, it's soft. Now it's really building. Jesus. <laughs> it's not like the bow is heavy. I've just seen this angle. I'm like... <laughs> The guy, with the guy, the customer who purchased this bow, I don't think he shot archery before. I'm like, why are you buying this bow? Look, if you like Gearhead, I've got no problem with you buying a bow or buying this bow. But for your first bow, buy a normal bow, like 32 inches plus. Just something normal, even a beginner bow, just to get started. Well, wow. okay, we're going to take this shot. <laughs> that was a lot less scary than I would have thought. Um, a shinny and gold tip velocity, four, 400. Um, the weight's 327, it's got a 90 grain point. Um, the bow set at 60 pounds. It's meant to be 29 and a half inches, but you can see I'm like leaning my head forward because um, <laughs> this string's so such a cute angle. The draw length feels it feels like 27. It feels crazy short. It the bow is extremely quiet to shoot. Very surprising. Um, what I was looking at, I was looking at the limb stop and I was looking at the cam lean. As I started drawing this, the cams were pretty much straight up and down. Uh, <laughs> we can shoot another one. This, because of the acute, because of the bow's so short, it's going to take a while to get used to. And I don't like the fact you can't adjust the draw length. I mean, if you buy the bow and it's the wrong draw length for you, it's like you're buggered. Um, and that's a huge, huge risk. Because even when you buy a bow, like let's say I'm 29 and a half or 29, and sometimes I'm 28 and a half, each bow is going to be a little bit unique. So it doesn't even matter if you like jump from brand to brand. Some bows you're going to want a little bit longer, and some you're going to want a little bit shorter. So I've brought bows before with drawing specifics. Like let's say I'm 29, I buy it 29. I get it and it just feels too short for me. So that's why I'm big, like huge on draw length adjustability on bows. That was with that was with the VAP um, Victory VAP 350 um, 140 grain point. I think it's two uh, sorry 390 grains 262. Now the thing with this, it feels too short for me. My release aid is in the back of my neck here, but I normally have the string touching my nose and touching here. Finally, my nose is too not big enough with this bow because I feel like I want to. I feel like I want to draw it back further. I want this string to touch my nose, but I can't because it's too short. 
because the angle's too acute. Ah, uh, it's like it's a very weird. It's a very weird bow to shoot and get the feel of. Now the other thing with the peep sight, the peep sight's going to be up here, so it's going to be right next to the to the wheel. Um, so we're going to have a couple more shots. And the thing, like. If you're into archery, like if you like bows and arrows, you're probably watching this because you like bows and arrows. This is a unique bow. This is like an Oneida, like a lever bow. It's a cool thing to have a shot with. And this is a cool thing to have a shot with because it's so different to anything else on the market. It's quiet, it doesn't move much, it does a little bit of this. There's a spot there for stabilizers down there. Um, two Allen, two Allen keys to bolt the arrow rest on. Look, it feels it feels okay. It feels short. And going on the website on the gearhead website, there's so little information about the bow, I think it's a bit disappointing to me. There's a serial number on the bow on the side. Um, like I would have liked the, all the specs on the bow. The, you know, like what size, this has got a, a number five cam. I'd like a chart to say what a number five cam means for draw length. I'm guessing it's 29 and a half or 29 because the guy, the, the customer who brought this bow would have been a 30 inch draw length. Um, he sold to me two bows and I haven't checked the other bow yet, um, but customers have said, have said that's a 29 and a half inch bow. So, let's just have a couple more shots. And what's interesting to me is if you have a look where my arrow is, where as I draw this bow back, the arrow is actually inside the shelf here. Now with most bows when I shoot, these arrows are very long in the bow. So when I pull back the bow, the arrow is generally out the front of the bow by about that much. So this bow has to be somewhere around the 29, but I could definitely do with this bow about an inch longer. Um, It feels like it's going to be hard to shoot, but it feels easy. The draw cycle feels easy. Um, the valley doesn't doesn't drop off, so it's not a big kaput valley. It feels like about a 70 to 80 percent let off. Bit of that. Um, I'm obviously getting more comfortable with this bow. To me, it's a bit of a novelty still. Um, I'd like to see how well I shoot with this bow at distance. Um, look, I, I like it, it's kind of cool. Um, obviously nicely made, so I think now we'll shoot at 18 meters and see how well I shoot, and I'm guessing I'm gonna struggle. Now. I'm going to say with the longer gearhead bows, people shoot extremely well with them. This is the shorter gearhead bow, so I'm going, to, I'm going to suggest I'm going to struggle with it. I have struggled with every bow under 30 inches that I've ever tested in my entire time. So this is 20 inches, so I'm going to guess I'm going to struggle with this. But let's go and shoot and see how, I, see how well I go. Okay, so I'm back at 18. Um, we're going to try the gearhead bow. Now I did hit, hit the center. And I'm finding the bow a lot more comfortable to shoot. I'm kind of getting used to it. I'm bending my front arm a bit, I'm tilting my head into the shot, um, feeling a bit more comfortable and confident. I'm going to say the string, the center serving here is a little bit loose around the knock, so you can see there's a little bit of play here with the knocks. Not very impressed with that. Um, I feel like that string should be thicker, center serving should be thicker. I don't, look, I don't know if it's that safe to shoot the way it is at the moment, so just bear that in mind. Um, but I'm liking the way the bow shoots. I'm getting comfortable with the grip. The grip's definitely different to all the other compound bows. Normally I feel pressure up, up 
kind of here in your hand. I'm feeling more pressure down here, which is not good, but it seems to be shooting you right, so let's see how it goes. I suppose what I'm looking for is that familiarity when I shoot from one bow to the next. And because this has got such a unique grip, it's feeling a bit different for me. I feel like I'm moving around a lot. I don't know if that's because the sight's at the back as opposed to at the front. I don't. I don't know if it's because it's a little bit windy or just whether I'm just shivering in the cold of summer because it's really really cold today like it's raining uh, <laughs> it's really cold um, And you say, why don't you have a jumper on and why don't you have long pants on? Because I feel like it's the middle of summer and I just don't believe it's this cold. Um, so I'm in denial, basically. The bow feels really soft to shoot as far as slow. Um, it feels very compact. It feels like it would be a good bow to go for a walk with in the bush because it's just so compact. It just feels like part of your body to hold on to. So I imagine the people who will like this bow is people who are like hunting. It's like, you know, you could go running with this bow and have no issue with it. So sort of get in the way. It doesn't feel bulky. It's obviously compact. Um, I don't think you're going to want to shoot this bow at distance. But <laughs> like, would it be a good bow to shoot rabbits with? <laughs> It'd probably be fun to shoot rabbits with this bow. Um, I think probably loading the broadhead may be a problem with the shoot through riser design. I don't know. But the bow feels a lot more, feels very solid bow. Um, the Chinese bows, a lot of plastic in them. They don't, they don't feel as solid. This bow feels a lot of quality in the bow. When I'm shooting this bow, I'm going, look, Customer said he paid fifteen hundred Australian dollars for the bow. I think at fifteen hundred, it's a bit expensive. It's seven hundred American, and what I think when I see a bow American price, I think well, that's what it is, Australian wholesale generally. So this bow should retail for about seven hundred odd Australian wholesale, and probably then retail at um, rough numbers, which means it's probably around eight hundred. Um, but you know, like I'm talking rough numbers. So let's say it's under a thousand dollars Australian. Now under a thousand Australian, it puts this bow in a very unique price point, and it would be a pretty attractive bow at under a thousand dollars. Like, I don't know what GearHead's wholesale pricing is. Um, but is this a bow I'd like to hang on my wall and pull out because it's a bit unique? Yeah, look, I... The more I shoot this bow, the more I'm liking it. 
and I'd like to try some of the bigger axle axle gear head bows. Now I'd definitely like to try some which have got the adjustable drawing. Let's just shoot one more because I'm actually quite cold. Look, I'm liking the grip now. To start with, I was finding the grip a bit different. Um, I'm starting to catch you one more. I was finding the grip a bit different to other bows, but now it's like becoming more comfortable for me. Um, the draw cycle becoming more confident. I would like the draw, draw length to be longer. I like the solidness of the of the wall. Um, the sight's a little bit hard to adjust. The bow's nice and quiet. I'd like the string to be thicker. There's no vibration in the shot, which is really nice. Price point, which we've already been through. 1500 I think it's a little bit expensive for the bow. But at um, you know a thousand, where I think this bow should be, in it, as far as Australian dollars, it would be good. The bow's unique enough that it's got a kind of collected element to it. That I think the problem is normally when you shoot bows and arrows, like a lot of the bows are similar. So it's like, well, what's the point of having this bow and this bow when they're so similar? This bow is very unique. So. This would be like if I wanted to go up to my mum's, mum owns a archery range, an archery course where like it's a field course where you walk around the bush and shoot animal style targets. This would be good for me um, where I'd run from target to target with like a bow quiver on the bow, shoot the shot, click, run, click the arrows, run to the next target to get a bit of fitness in. That This bow would be awesome for that and I'm kind of thinking that that might be a good thing. Um, the bow's basically brand new. I don't think he ever shot the, the bow. The rest has got no signs of wear. The sights weren't adjusted. So I'm pretty pretty safe to say this bow wasn't shot before, before he sold it to me. Um, so my summary. Like I like the bow. I was scared when I started because I didn't know anything about it. I hadn't shot one. I'm like, this is going to be a derailing machine. I would still be hesitant about this bow for a beginner. I would not suggest this bow for a beginner. But for an advanced archer, if you can get to shoot one, get that draw length correct, get the confidence in a shop to shoot the bow, I think it's a pretty cool little bow. And if you're getting it for a purpose, like this is not your, this is not your first bow to buy. If you're getting it for the purpose, like I'm looking for a short range field bow, hunting bow, where I'm like, it's nice and compact, I can th crawl through the bush or I can shoot from a tent, as I kind of said. But for me, like just running in the bush from target to target, um, my normal bows are not suitable for that. They're too big, stabilizers on, too bulky. Um, it'd be good for that. And as I said, I'd like to try a longer version of it. The, the build quality looks excellent. Um, the limbs look nice. I would like more statistics on their website about the bow. Look, maybe they do nice YouTube videos I haven't seen uh, about the bow. Um, I'd like adjustable cams. I'd like a chart to show what a number five cam is. But all up, I think it's pretty good. And I think if you're in America, this would be a pretty good thing. Um, this is number 2,585, so I guess there's been 2,000 of these bows made. Doesn't seem like a lot for the number of archers in America. Um, and I think it's kind of a bit of a unique thing, um, unique bow, so it's kind of interesting. Let's go and have a look. Jeez, what? I did, I did not expect this. Um, you can say, oh yeah, Stephen, you do expect this. I absolutely did not expect that. 
I felt like I was moving around everywhere. So when I was aiming the target, my sight pin was moving all over that gold. So normally when I aim, my sight pin, like especially when I was shooting the citation yesterday when I did, did the review, my sight pin was steady in the gold. It was just sitting there like bouncing. This time, bear in mind the sights pointed backwards towards the bow. Um, it was all over the, definitely all over the 10 and I'm shaking because it's so cold. Um, that is an awesome group. Like it, I expected them to be all over the target. Um, so that one's an awesome group. Now, as I, I started this review, one of my friends shoots a gearhead and said, contact gearhead about getting these bows in. You won't regret it. He said that awesome. Um, I don't know if I sent an email to gearhead. I thought I did, but I didn't hear anything back. So it's like, no. Um, Look, that's a really good group for a 20 inch axle axle bow. Go say it again, do not get this bow if you're a beginner because you're going to derail it, the draw length issues and all that sort of stuff. But that's a pretty good group. Um, I didn't mind shooting it. I really like the com I like the build quality. I really like the build quality of the bow. No vibration I really liked. I like the draw cycle. I like the limb stop. So, price point is $1,500, too expensive. $1,000 would be great for this bow. Um, and I think this would be a nice bow to add to your range if you had other bows. Now, my friend in America who shoots a gearhead, who told me all about it and sort of let me, you know, gave me this whole detailed information on how he's going shooting gearhead, how much he loves it, he swapped from another bow. Um, this is just going from memory, so it could be wrong, but he was saying he shoots this bow extremely well and he just ordered himself another one, custom one. Um, I can't remember what the custom one was and I'm sorry to, to him for saying that. Um, the bow hadn't arrived, arrived at the time, I think, when he sent me a message, but he told me he ordered a custom one, but he had one. Um, he said he loved it and he shoots extremely well with it. And I'm pretty sure he shoots competition archery with it. I know he hunts. Um, but he's mainly a competition archer and he's just saying how well he shot with it and I, I totally believe you do, would shoot well with this bow it feels so solid and with the longer axle axle versions you're not going to have that string angle issue that I was having with this bow where I was trying to angle in the string and duck, ducking my head down um, to shoot it um, I would not shoot this bow with a peep sight because it's too close to the wheel up the top I wouldn't be doing it too it's just too short a string. Um, the problem with the peep sight, if you are going to fit a peep sight, it needs to have a really, really large hole because it's going to be so far away from your eye. Um, but I just shoot it just the way I did then. Just open it, bang, shoot it. Um, you could have some problems fitting um, drop away RRS to this bow because the cord cords here are going to be so um, short. You might be able to fit them to the cable slide because there's a hole here but um, I would keep this bow simple if I was going to shoot this as a hunting bow um, I'd probably shoot a whisker biscuit with it um, but I, I like the gear head I really do I like the gear head I think it's an I think it's a very under publicized bow I don't know how many of them you've seen I this is my first um, I mean, I've obviously seen them, but not in real life, you know, so there's not customers coming to my shop with them. Um, I don't think anyone in Australia sells them. I could be wrong. It could be some person who sells them, but it's not one of the major shops in Australia sells them. Um, it could be a guy in his backyard who's not really a shop and I'm not having a shot at him if he sells gearhead. I just don't know you sell it. You haven't given me a distributor price list. You haven't publicized it. And no one in this state is shooting one. So it's no disrespect to you if you are the gearhead distributor. I just don't know of you. So, um, yeah, nice bow. Nicely finished. Nicely made. I'm going to say the customer who shoots this thing, he, he pushes it. He, he's not sponsored. He tells me how good the owners are and how good they are to communicate with. Um, as I said, I'm pretty sure I sent them an email. I'm pretty sure they didn't get back to me, but 
he has a he probably phoned I don't know but he he swears by them swears by the owners um, so yeah I think it's a nice boat and I think they do have some custom options available so check them out and if you can have a shot um, try and have a shot with the larger one but the shorter one I found a bit of fun after a while I'm kind of thinking about keeping it um, we'll see I'm gonna think about it because I did enjoy this after shooting it so I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies Gearhead this you this, this Gearhead Dis disruptor. Oh, if I could see. Disruptor it is. Disruptor 20. Um, the draw weight is from 55 to 70. Um, it's got a little tag there. Um, <laughs> disruptor. I thought it was dis, dis something. I thought there was a P. Anyway. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.